This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I will be speaking with the company Remediant. I'm sitting down right now with Timothy Keeler, who's going to show us a demo of Secure One. Take it away. Great. Thanks, uh, yeah. thanks for having me. All right, so I'm just going to jump right in here. Yeah. Um, I'm at the Secure One web interface, and I'm just going to log in with my Active Directory credentials here. And you'll see in a moment I am being uh, presented with my second factor, which I am okay. pulling from my mobile device right now as nice. the clock changes. Nice. Excellent. Oh, wow. Okay, great. So now that we're logged into the Secure One web interface, we can see a, a dashboard of what the Secure One system is, is doing on the network. So okay. just at a high level, we can see the, the number of systems we've inventoried on the network, uh, the number of its users that it's managing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to go through some of this information really quickly. Okay. Here we can see a, a snapshot of our highest privileged accounts. So this shows us the individuals in the organization that have administrator level, level access uh, in a ranked order uh, throughout the whole company. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to jump right into our insight page, which is uh, usually the most uh, enlightening uh, for, for uh, information professionals looking to figure out where their, uh, where their real risks are mm -hmm. for our administrative accounts. So we, uh, we're capturing a couple of things. And what SecureOne is doing is, is connecting out to each system and learning about the, uh, the individuals that are in the local administrative group on each endpoint. Okay. And then what we do is we take this information, we cross-reference it with Active Directory, and we break that down so we have a, an understanding. We know what individuals have a one-to-one -one level of administrative access mm -hmm. to uh, different systems on the network. Now, one of the biggest challenges in an Active Directory environment is uh, nested groups. Mm -hmm. So when you have a group that's a member of a group that's an, a member of another group, it's really, really hard to identify um, you know, how all that stuff breaks down because you have to figure out recursion and you have to loop through all these groups. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard for, for companies to just, you know, hey, tell me who I have, yeah. tell me who has administrative rights to these systems. So this, this view is designed to break that down. So here we can see my account has access to uh, 21 different systems. Okay. That might be my account might be sitting directly in the admin group on those systems, uh, but I'm, I'm also inheriting administrative privilege through uh, other Active Directory groups. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this is just a demo environment, so 21 systems is not a lot. And a, a large in enterprise environment, we're going to see these numbers to be much higher. Right. So if I wanted to see what um, uh, actual systems my account has access to, I just simply type in my username here in the user search pane. And now we can get a breakdown of all the different systems that my account huh. has uh, admin privileges to. We also provide this information from uh, a system perspective. So now I can see what systems in my environment have uh, you know, the most amount of uh, administrators. Okay. So in this example here, uh, you know, this biz app system has 40 different administrators. And if I just type in that system name, Here we can wow. see, okay, here's all the different individuals. So one of the things uh, that we can view here is all the different domain groups that are added to that system. And again, this is breaking down all this complex uh, hierarchy with an Active Directory. So now we can see the full flattened list of administrators nice. in the organization that have admin privilege to this. And, and when we go through a, a really quick POC assessment in enterprises, we show this information uh, in literally minutes. Mm -hmm. and. Um, most companies are really surprised that, oh, we had no idea we had this much administrative sprawl wow. in, in the whole environment. So bringing it down and having real visibility into that is, is really uh, important here. So this is all uh, you know, keeping track. Part of the continuous monitoring is we'll know when administrative privileges change on different systems. Okay. And we'll show this from an audit uh, historical view. So if I hop into my 
uh, Insight page, and I just look for, uh, let's just pick my HR server here. Okay. Here you can see over time uh, what individuals had administrative access uh, at any given moment. Huh. So we'll see you know, now a trend, so we can, we can tell when, hey, someone added a new administrator to a system, and this is really important because if you ever have to go through uh, an, an audit check or a forensics investigation, mm -hmm. we now keep that whole historical track of these individuals had administrative rights on the system. Wow, and that saves so moment. much time. That's right. Um, so we also do that from the computer, we do that from an end user perspective, but I really want to just dive into the, the nuts and bolts of our product, mm -hmm. which is uh, where people really get excited. And that's around our just-in-time administrative, um, ad administrative approach. Okay. So what we're doing here, and I'm just going to pull up the same HR server. Here we can see on the right-hand side are the list of administrative accounts that we have inventoried. Mm -hmm. uh, and on this left hand side we can see there's two modes so we have scan mode which collects that information mm -hmm. and then when we want to lock down the amount of access or privilege to the system we can turn on protect mode okay. and that's where we use a local service account with administrative privilege to give us the ability to add and remove administrators uh, on the system nice. so when we turn on protect mode we take any any accounts whether it's a domain user or domain group that were in the administrative group on that system and we take them out, right? So we, oh, wow. we lock it down to that zero privilege state so nobody has access to log into that system. There's a couple exceptions here. Uh, the first is obviously our secure one service account. Mm -hmm. needs that level of administrative rights. Mm -hmm. And here we can see where this is marked as persistent. We also have the local administrator, mm -hmm. which, always has local admi which always has administrative privilege. And then any accounts that we deem necessary to have 24-7 um, you know, privilege uh, on that system. Okay. So service accounts is a big scenario, mm -hmm. although we allow a just-in-time administration for those accounts. But if there are certain accounts where we need 24-7 access, we can mark those as persistent as okay. well. So uh, I just want to hop over to my remote desktop here briefly. So let's say I want to connect into this HR server. Uh, let's just go ahead, you know, connect the systems in protect mode. Mm -hmm. So we'll see in just a moment here as it connects in. I'm going to get, uh, let's go ahead and click continue. I'm getting an, an error message. Okay. So I'm trying to log in to the system and it's saying, hey, I have successfully authenticated but my authorization was denied for ah. the system. So I'm not able to, by default, log into the system because it's in a fully protected state. Got it. Now, going through the web interface, I've logged in with two-factor authentication. So mm -hmm. I've verified my identity. I went through that additional check. And then we want to make this just super easy to get access to this uh, HR server. And all we have to do is just click this one system access, huh. uh, access system button. And so what Secure One did was it verified my account has administ administrative privilege to the system. And then it went ahead and put it into the local administrative group on that on that system. Okay. And by default, um, we have four hours of activity that I can log in with. Um, that's totally configurable uh, for the for the customer. Okay. Uh, so now, if I go back to my remote desktop, I should be able to log into the system here. And four hours is the window that you have, basically. Okay. That's right. So. At the end of the four hours, my access will automatically be pulled back, ah. putting that system back into a fully um, locked down state. Okay, right. very cool. Let's see if I can remember my password here. And I could be logging in through remote desktop on the system. Mm -hmm. I could be logging in via PowerShell, whatever means I would normally do uh, on my day-to-day -day job. So we're not restricting how you control, how you can log into that system. We're just giving you you know, that, that temporary elevated using um, using your own identity with administrative privilege. Okay. So we'll see the nice. desktop load up here in just a moment. And now you can see with Secure One, I've wow. been able to log into the system. So if we take a look at our local administrative group here. Okay, great. So let's go into our administrators group. We'll see there's, there's three accounts here. Mm -hmm. Here's my account, T Keeler, which Secure One just pushed into the yeah. system. And obviously, the local administrator account and then our, our local service account. Mm -hmm. uh, and those credentials on this, uh, on, on this HR server, is, it's unique. So we have other service accounts out there. That's why we use local accounts mm -hmm. to stop against 
uh, lateral movement if those accounts were ever compromised, so they each have their own unique set of credentials. Okay. Nice. Now, I want to show one really powerful capability of our, of our technology, mm -hmm. and this is around the continuous monitoring. So, so typically when you're using a, a password vault solution or some other process to log into these systems, it's really easy for administrators to add backdoor accounts because they don't want to go through this uh, really difficult, cumbersome process. Okay. Uh, so if I just go in here, you know, let's say I had uh, you know beers with my buddy last night, and mm -hmm. I said, "Hey, just log into the system directly. I'll make you a new admin." Uh, let's just see if we have a, a test user here. All right, I'm going to pick this uh, individual, Robert Adkins. So now we think, okay, we're we're good to go. Uh -huh. uh, this person can bypass whatever system to log in directly with admin rights. Right. But if I hop back over with to secure one, I'm just going to uh, initiate a rescan here. The continuous monitoring is going to to constantly detect this. Mm -hmm. But here we can see the new administrator that oh, I went yeah. ahead and added. Right. So we learn we learn that new admin. We add it back into our inventory. So. The, the admins can follow the same process to add new people to the system, mm -hmm. but if I go back to my remote desktop and I look into the local admin group, we'll see that that account was removed. Oh, yeah. So this enforces the, the security of the system by making that individual, they have to go through Secure One, they have to go through two-factor authentication, and that way we, we now keep that full same process for individuals that need to log in with administrative nice. privilege. And that's really important because if that user's credentials ever get compromised at any given point, mm -hmm. an attacker is not going to be able to use those credentials to log in directly mm -hmm. to those systems. Right. So they'll still have to go through uh, you know, the dynamic process of Secure One mm -hmm. and gain elevated privilege uh, using that second factor check. All right, so here um, I'm just going to log out. Actually, I'm just going to kill my session here. Uh, so at the end of the four hours, my access mm -hmm. will automatically get taken away. Ah. And it, let's say I'm a good admin. I say I'm done with this. I can just go ahead and oh, expire nice. my access already. So now it's pulled my account back out of the local admin group, put it, you know, keeps it in this fully zero privilege state. And of course, we have our full, you know, audit history. Wow. We can see all the activity, what I've done, what other individuals have done on this system, and we forward all that information to your centralized SIM solution, so you can do more advanced reporting, analytics around uh, the types of processes uh, administrators are, are following. Very cool. Well, thank you for showing me this. This is great. Yeah. So this is really the, the nuts and bolts of Secure One. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very simple, very elegant. We want it to be as intuitive as possible, and. Uh, I think this is the big reason why administrators like using our product. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, th thank you again so much for uh, breaking this all down. This was really great. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. And that's all the time that we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.